Hello and welcome back Super Mums. In today's video, we're going to be speaking to Leanna Reed, who returned to full-time work, not just after her first child, but also after her second child. Now do remember that the videos in this series are all about just experiencing some real mums' approaches to the work-life situation. Your circumstances may be completely different, but this is just to give you a bit of inspiration, a bit of an insight, Maybe you're much further down the line. Maybe your child's starting school or maybe your child's starting secondary school. Or maybe you just feel like a mix up. Maybe your partner situation has changed. Maybe you got rid of the partner and that's why the situation has changed. But this is just to give you a bit of an inspiration and a bit of guidance. We are by no means saying that to be a super mum, you have to follow this exact example. Because remember, being a super mum is about being the mum that you want to be. So, and thank you very much for joining us this evening. So, we're actually filming this pretty late on a Sunday evening because we're both busy mums and this is when we could fit it in. This is real people, this is real life. Um, so, could you start by introducing us to you as as a mum, so ignoring the work side of things, who are you as a mum? Uh, tell us a little bit about your small people and how old they are and, and what genders. Yeah. Feel free to say names, but you don't have to. Of course, that's absolutely fine. So I'm Liana. I'm from Sussex. I've got two little girls. Um, I've got Esme, who has just turned seven, and Esme and, and Elsie. I've got their names mixed up then. <laughs> and Elsie, who is three, um, and I live with my husband, um, and we both work full time. Lovely. I I feel like I was destined to have a girl. I'm quite happy at one and I say if I'd had a boy it might have been different. I'm yeah. I'm worried she's gonna turn out to be a tomboy, but at the moment mummy is very much embracing having having a girl <laughs> and the pink and things. Are you a very are you pink and girly girls or um have you got a mixture? I feel like we've got a mixture really, but in different ways. So my more girly girl, for instance, won't have her nails painted. She, she oh. won't have her hair, she won't have her nails painted. But my tomboy little girl, she will have her nails painted, she will have her hair done. But she is the complete opposite. She will get muddy, she will roll around in dirt, climb everything. But my more girly girl who likes to dress nicely and she likes to um, do other people's hair, she doesn't like her hair being touched and she doesn't like her nails being done. So I don't really know what I'm going to end up with at this point. I think they're just going to sort of go <laughs> their own little paths. <laughs> She'll wear bows on her hair, but she won't have her nails touched. God no, if you try and paint oh, her nails. <laughs> it gets a bit frustrating when they get their own personalities and you're like, mm -hmm. but but mummy bought you nice outfits to wear and you don't want to wear any. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'm not looking forward to that stage. I'm ever hopeful Felicity won't get there and she'll be happy to, for mummy to dress her until she's 25. Um, yeah. but we'll, we'll see about that. Um, so, could you tell us a little bit about what your work life looked like before you had your children? So, before I had my children, I worked in a school, but I worked full time. So, I didn't get all the term time or the school time hours or anything. I did nine to five at a school um, and I was an administrative assistant so I was working in the office doing a lot of the things like um, pupils attendance and things like that but it was your pretty average nine to five really although it wasn't a school um, and it was pretty quiet after three o'clock so that was quite nice we um it, it was pretty bog standard to be fair um, and then I'd obviously be able to go home and go out and have a bath and do things whenever I wanted to before I had kids, as you do before you have children. Um, but yeah, that was that was pretty much it before I had children. Just your bog standard when you're young and you can go and do that sort of thing. And then when you had your first, how did you transition back into a work life after you had your first child? So after I had my first child, I, I decided for money reasons, I was on my own after I had my first child um, and I really wanted to bring in a bit of extra income and I sort of ended up falling into two part-time roles. Um, I did a bit of delivery driving in the evening when her dad used to have her and I also managed to get a really good part-time job working from home doing admin uh, based stuff. So that worked quite well for me but then I was working quite a lot in the end because I was working all day at home and then I was also doing like delivery driving in the evening just to bring in a bit of extra income. Um, 
and I feel like I've always had that thing that where I feel like I should work and then I think that sort of took over a bit after I had my first child and I was just doing too much. Yeah. And then when you had your second child, the situation changes all over again and yeah. it's a whole new learning curve. And um, how did you transition back into work life again now you, once you had two and, and you've got the, with the four year age gap, that's quite a big sort of age gap to suddenly wrangle childcare setups and things. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously I'm with my husband now. Um, and also while I, after I had my first daughter, I decided that I wanted to get a degree and I actually wanted to go and make a career path that I could follow through with. So I was doing my law degree as well. Um, when my first born was three months old, I think I started. So just after I had Elsie, my second daughter, I completed my degree, I think when she was about one. Um, and then obviously I decided I wanted to try and get into the legal sector. I thought it was gonna take me a long time and it didn't. And I remember crying when I found out I got the job because I really didn't think that I was gonna go back to work so soon. Um, oh, wow. It was also like my opportunity to go into this thing that I'd trained so hard for for so many years. I'd had the kids and dealt with all the studying and the exams and everything and felt like I couldn't say no almost. <laughs> so I sort of <laughs> fell in back into work when I after had my second because I was just applying for millions of things thinking there's no way I'm going to get this job in the legal sector. And then I just did. And I was like, oh my God, now what do I do? Because I haven't even thought about what I'm going to do from here with childcare and I hadn't thought about it, I hadn't looked at nurseries, I hadn't even considered going back to work. So that was quite hard. <laughs> <laughs> A big transition. And is that the, are you in the same role now or have you, have you sort of ch changed so moved, positions? Yeah, I've moved up now. I'm doing my postgraduate studies at the moment. Um, and I've just actually, I've literally just got a promotion up to paralegal. I was a secretary, now I'm about to be a paralegal and hopefully eventually I'll go into being a solicitor. Um, but it just takes like a long time of law. <laughs> it's just all these different things. So um, I, I am in the same role, but I am moving up. So it's almost more responsibility. It takes, it takes more of a toll. Well, to be studying along that, that's like yeah. a full-time job and a half and <laughs> yeah. two kids. Yeah, and people do normally sound a bit mad really, but um, I feel like I've always, always done it now because I started when Esme was so little that it's just always been something that I've done in the evenings and I've always been studying for an exam or something. So it's just sort of second nature to me now. So was that your your drive to take this route is that you really this was the career path that you really wanted to choose you you said that you've always like really wanted to work and that sort of drove you to do so many hours after your first but once you got to your second it was this sort of feeling that you really wanted to have a career and um, so I think that's the can be a, a tricky thing for for mums to grapple with and a big thing where mum guilt comes in yeah. is Oh, I don't deserve a career I should just be looking after my kids and actually if having a career is essential to you being you I, I personally believe that makes you a better mum you being you makes you a better mum whether that means that you're staying at home full-time or whether that means you're working full-time and like you working full-time and a half because you're studying alongside it as well um, was that really sort of foundational to you feeling like you were going to be yourself as a mum yeah, I mean, I didn't have a great start when I had Esme um, and I was in a mother and baby unit and things like that. And I think I just sat there and thought this really isn't, this isn't the life that I really want to lead forever. I, you know I, mean? I don't want to be stuck in retail jobs or minimal school jobs or anything like that forever. Not that saying that minimal school jobs are minimal, but I just wanted something that really made me feel proud of myself almost. Yeah. That, I, that I could do this and I could accomplish it and I always thought that I couldn't. Um, and I think it just sort of rolled all from there. Like I started and then I was like, oh, maybe I can do this. And then I got a job and I was like, oh, okay, maybe I am doing this. And before you know it, you are doing it. And you know, I, my husband loves turning people that I work in law and I study law and he thinks it's the best thing since sliced bread. So I suppose he's got that as well. Um, but yeah, it does come from the drive to just, I really wanted to prove to everyone that I wasn't just gonna be this really young mother who and I think there is a perception of that 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 isn't going to work and who is just going to you know sit at home and whatever even though single mothers don't I don't feel like they do do that for, but for me personally that was how I felt in myself was that I wasn't going to be that person that did that I was going to go out and get a career and, and do that path 
So that that is what was true to you. And that's what yeah. I'm constantly trying to tell people. There's there is no right or wrong. And I do find um I find this comes up a lot and people say, but I don't identify with being a super mum and I get talking to them and they're like, Oh no, actually I am a super mum and I was like, it's yeah. it's about being true to yourself and cutting off everything that isn't true to you. Don't do the stuff that doesn't matter to you. That's where yeah. the super that's where the magic lies. That's where the super lies in really being true to you. And this is what was yeah. true to you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but both my sisters aren't sure whether they're going to go back to work after having their children. And I think that's completely your prerogative. I mean, if you want to, or you can stay home and you have that option or you want to, absolutely, absolutely do it. Just for me personally, I really wanted a different route of being the mum that does work and does this and does everything. <laughs> I think that that's the big thing now is there's, in an ideal world, there'd be no judgment on any of the choices. Mm -hmm. The problem is now there's yeah. judgment on every choice. Yeah, I get so every... much flack. I get so much flack. I get a lot of people who are saying, if one of my children's ill, for instance, I'll be like, oh, I've really got to go to work and like, try and ring someone and try and look after them. And people are like, but that's your child and they're sick mm. and you need to stay home and be a mother. And I find that quite hard. And like, if I'm not there for the Christmas plays or I'm not there mm. for sports day and things like that, it's not always, easy but then I feel like I get a lot of flack for that a lot of people judge me for being like no I've got to go to work and they're like but that's your child so I think it works both ways really I think everyone no one can win everyone just gets flack for yeah. that. none of us can win so we might as well do what's right for us I mean I I work predominantly from home and only I say only have I have 10 hours of sort of outside childcare and then I juggle between me and my partner and um, mm -hmm. But we're both self-employed and we both, both work from home. Now, some people would look at that as ideal. I still get a flack for that because they're like, you let your like child play at your feet while you work on your laptop. That's awful. And I'm like, you can't win. You, can, you cannot no. win. There is no win. Do, do what is true to you. It's kind of your, it's your safest bet because at least you can look at yourself in the mirror and, and say you're happy. And yeah. so for you, I feel like you've kind of touched on this, but what has been the, the biggest benefit for you of, of following this route? I feel like I, I feel like my own person. I'm my own per at work. I'm a different person. I have friends. I'm I'm Liana, the legal assistant. I'm not Liana, the mum. And then at home, I am Liana, the mum. Liana, the wife. But it gives me my own my own self worth and my own purpose at work as a as a human being with my own brain, I don't have to sing shark doo 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 at work. <laughs> I can talk about politics, I can talk about different parts of the law and actually feel relevant. Whereas I feel like I don't always feel like that at home because mm. you, you you get swept up in Peppa Pig and whatever else. And that is relevant at home, but sometimes it's nice to have other relevance outside of the home, I feel. <laughs> and what would you say for you has been the biggest downside to this path? It obviously is very much the right path for you, but even even the greatest options have some, some downside. Yeah, it's definitely, like I said, when the kids are ill, for instance, and you know, you wanna be at home with your babies and comforting them, but you also know there's a big court date coming up or there's um, a big, a, a client coming in or something going on, or you know there's loads of work to do at work and you're really torn between having responsibility at work and obviously being responsible as a mother and wanting to be at home with your babies when they're not feeling well. And the same with like Christmas, like with the Christmas plays and the sports days, they're always like 2 p.m. right in the middle of the work day. So for me, I have to either take off a whole afternoon or I have to try and send one of my family members or something. But I really struggle with that, I find, is that you, you can't attend everything because there's so many things. There's an Easter thing, there's the Harvest Festival, there's the sports days, there's the Christmas play, there's, there's always gonna be something going on and it's always going to be at 2 p.m. in the middle of the day. So even right at the beginning of the day, I work quite far away from home, so I, can't, I still can't even do that a lot of the time. I do try and, I try and do as much as I can, and my husband and I try and work it between us, but it's hard to take off a whole afternoon. It'd be like, sorry, I've got to take the afternoon off because Esme's playing Mary. Yeah. <laughs> so I quite often have to do family members and stuff, but that's the hardest thing for me, is having to almost miss out on things like that. 
but as they get older those things move into the evenings as well and we yeah. were at school at 7 30 for a concert that was going to start at eight so it becomes a bit more realistic yeah. um, we had the bonus with our junior stores we worked um we had school saturday morning so oh, i think okay. sports day was normally on the saturday morning which is great it meant all the parents could could come yeah. so, <laughs> so much, much better fun. Such a better idea. But they'll have things like there'll be like key stage two meeting for all the parents, two PM Friday, and they'll send it out on Thursday. And I'll be like, no, like that's not feasible for anybody. Or they'll say, Your child starved a week and they send it home on Thursday, you can attend assembly on Friday morning. Yeah, like, I'm like, oh, I, I can't do that. Feel I, bad. Know, yeah. I might know at half past six on a Thursday evening, I can't bring my boss and say Actually, I'm going to be two hours late in the morning because I've got to go to assembly. I do try and get one of the other, to be fair, I try and get one of the other parents because there's normally, I'm quite lucky in that when Esme first went to school and I worked part-time from home and delivery driving, um, I met quite a lot of parents and made friendship groups. So quite often one of them will be in the assemblies and they will record it for me. And when I get home, I'll play it to Esme and say, look, mummy did watch you. I'm, you know, I did see your assembly. I know I couldn't be there, but mummy did what I'm really proud of you and I did watch it. So Aww. that's quite nice thought that they will do that sort of thing for me. So that's probably a really that's really good tip, isn't it? For for people trying to looking at trying to make this work is is find yeah. those those mums that, that can that's why I'm like society needs all these different types of mums because they need the mums that can get to these events to do the yeah. same timing and think that yeah. there's a balance. Like we don't Imagine if every single mum of every single pupil in the school had the free time to be a member of the PTA. Those yeah. PTA meetings would never end. They'd be hours long because everyone would be having a say. That could be like 200 and something kids in a year in some schools. Where yeah. There needs to be some balance. There needs to be like, I love a PTA. I've been a chairwoman of a PTA before I even had kids. I had step children at the time, but they weren't actually even at that school. <laughs> My oh, I love it. godson's sister and brother, it's not even my godson, my godson's sister and brother are at the school. And long story short, after one meeting to go and help out, I ended up as the chairwoman. But then I suppose I had no kids, so I had more time. No, that's true. That's very true. We need, we need this like, this balance and variety. Kids need to see the, the working full time and they need to see the work because then they can pitch their lives moving forward. I'm a big one of begin with the end in mind and I think if if children looking at what well they're teenagers by this point hopefully are looking at what they want to do with the rest of their lives and they don't have a specific career like I went to a very academic school and they were like yeah you're a vet, a banker, a solicitor or a doctor those were your options anything else wasn't kind of considered good enough and I didn't really have any, I didn't have a subject that I particularly liked. And what they need to say to those ones is, look, well, how do you want your life to be at the end? This, yeah. Do you want to work part time or full time? Because if you, if you are, you could be a mum or a dad, if you are hoping to be a parent, male or female, but you want to at least spend half of your time at home, then pick yeah. a career that has the ability to work it part Because some careers do not work as part time hours. You can't do the role as part time hours. No. That's exactly what I found. I searched for, I, I applied for hundreds of part-time legal jobs, <laughs> hundreds, and they're not, they don't really come up. It's not really, if you want to, if you want to make a real go of it and become a solicitor and stuff, you can't go into it as part-time. I feel like if you become a solicitor before you have children and then you can play around with your hours once you're established, yeah. because obviously you're established at a firm, but trying to go in, trying to, trying to go into law, um, once you've already had your children and try and do part time, that was never going to happen. It just so that for me that was quite hard to get around because I would have loved to have done part time ideally, but now I think it just sort of works now. Now that I do work full time, we just sort of mould into that, and the kids both go to nursery after school. They're in the same place, so they still get to spend time with each other after school and stuff. Mm. So it works for us. But yeah, I, I do think part time is like the key. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but it's uh, it wasn't you weren't willing to sacrifice your choice of career for the, for those kind of hours, and it's it's picking your priorities. Definitely. Yeah, it's 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 weighing up the pros and negatives. I mean, working full time does mean more money. It means that we can go on more holidays as a family. 
and spend quality time together. I mean, I do budget for absolutely everything. I'm still utterly frugal. I mean, nursery bills are extortionate. Um, but we still managed on four holidays this year. So, I mean, you can't can't quabble at that. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> you have to weigh up the pros and negatives. I could, I, I could have tried to pick something that was part time, but it may not have interested me nearly as much as law does. So that's the sacrifice that I make. So where do you see yourself work-wise in about five years' time? Where's, what's the, the five-year goal, vision for you? Well, I would love to have my own caseload by that point and actually be... Um, I'm trained to be a legal executive rather than assist just due to money, etc. It, that's not relevant. But um, I'd love to be a legal executive with my own caseload and have my own clients and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah, that's my goal for the next five years, is to get to that point. And ten years is that is that where you is that where you want to get to and stay, or is there is there a bigger ambition after that? I mean, I definitely would say that's where I want to get to and stay. I don't know if I would want to move any further up, say partnership or anything like that. I don't personally think at the moment that's not something that I'd want to be able to have to put the hours in for because that's mm. that's something that requires a, a lot of your time. But then my children in ten years' time they'll be seventeen and nearly 14 so you never know oh that's amazing well thank you for being so open and honest with us and sharing your amazing story and it is it is a really fabulous journey that you've been on and this fabulous story of self-discovery and and really being your own person and we've just wrapped up as we're filming this we've just wrapped up our month on being yourself and and how that is so vital to to motherhood because it is one of the things that seems to go out the window so quickly when you become a mum. Yeah. So quickly. Yeah. And I mean I I was quite lucky. I, I found myself so much more in becoming a mum, but it made me much more aware of how other people have the complete opposite. That complete opposite experience. So Thank you. Thank you for opening up and thank you for finding the time in your very, very <laughs> busy schedule. Um, no worries. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So, um, if you've got any questions, please do get in touch. Um, I can pass them on to Liana and, and get back to you guys. I'll also link Liana's blog down below. So, wherever you found this video, um, all the links, all the magic will be down there for you to find out how to get in contact with both of us. I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood and remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be. Cheers guys. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.